Welcome to the ID10T podcast number 1139. Uh, hey, let's talk about you, the ID10T community. Events at ID10T.com. Like Danny, who writes, at the beginning of the year, I started my own podcast called Actors Making It. It's conversations with actors and filmmakers who are grafting and learning, uh, trying to forge their careers in the industry. So often we personalize our experiences as actors trying to make it and often feel there's something wrong with us when we aren't booking the jobs. This podcast is to help those starting out who feel like something isn't working to let them know they aren't alone on the journey. Actors Making It is available uh, wherever anyone listens to podcasts and a visual version on YouTube. Uh, thank you so much, Danny. We'll check that out. Uh, events at ID10T.com for anyone else who has a thing that they want to share on the corkboard. This episode is Dick and Angel Strawbridge, a.k.a. Dick Strawbridge and Angel Adore, who are on one of our favorite shows, Lydia's and mine, uh, called Escape to the Chateau. We discovered this show um, fairly early on during quarantine, immediately fell in love with it, and watched all of it as quickly as we could. But basically, they're this British couple who buys a, a really a falling down chateau in France and then basically spends the series like restoring it and building it up in these incredibly uh, ingenious and creative ways, um, turning it into not only their home um, and home for their families, but also as uh, like an event and um, event space and like a B and B. So it is just an utterly charming and wonderful show. Uh, and I have so many friends who also watch the show and we bond over our love of uh, escape to the chateau. I highly recommend it. The most recent season, um, there are now seven in total. The most recent season uh, is on Peacock. All the seasons are available on Peacock. So uh, get that and watch this. You will absolutely love the show. If Because it, it's not just like a renovation restoration show. It's really just about them and their family and kind of weaving this whole experience together and honoring the history of the chateau and oh it's just it's just a gorgeous show and they are both lovely and uh, this was such a fun Lydia and I are such fans of uh, Dick and Angels and so uh, it was so wonderful and delightful to find out that they are just lovely to talk to um, so uh, here we go this is the ID10T podcast number 1139 with Dick and Angel of Escape to the Chateau. And now we escape to the podcast as we roll the thing. Initiating ID10T protocol. Hello. Hi. Hello, Chris. <laughs> How are you all doing? I didn't do a really good wave then, did I? <laughs> I we saw, we've seen people in real life and I've forgotten how to Zoom wave. Yeah, it's kind of weird. By the way, that that like royal wave is is really harsh on the wrist. Like we don't normally <laughs> we don't normally rotate our wrist. That yeah, this is much more. Hey guys, no, no, hey. it's much looser, much hey. looser, hey. much looser. Like yeah, can you imagine wave. if the queen came out at a procession and here comes the queen? Hey, hey everybody! Like I just <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you know, just like just waving around. I don't, would that go? I feel like that would go fine, right? People would be like, yeah, oh, people okay. would smile. Yeah. They're, <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to see you both. I, I, I'm kind of wearing a Strawbridge hat at the moment. I sort of feel like. Yeah, we like a bit of tweed. But you see, I'm, I'm a multi-panel Donny Goldman, you see. Donny Gold tweed, because I'm an Osterman. My wife's uh, family, her dad's family is from Donny Gold. Well, Donny Gold tweed, you got to wear that. What are you doing, Chris? Yeah, I, think this my... actually, I think this actually is... Uh, oh, look, I don't know if you can see it. 100% Donny Gold. Oh, oh, good man! Absolutely, it, well done. Well done. It suits you. Do you want me to get your hat? Oh, I feel like you're going to get a hat. <laughs> I, 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 I feel really I've, underdressed. I've got you a, like the odd one out. 
I'm gonna go and get a hat. <laughs> she's gonna, gonna go and get the hat. They're going upstairs, Nick. They're all, they're okay, all, they're all go- she's actually she's going down um, the, the first 30 steps to go to the cloakroom to get me a Donegal tweed hat. Oh my That's god, is this the cloakroom that's underneath the main staircase? No, 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 no. This is the one that we did with the um that the ceilings were so high when we first did it, it looked like you're actually sitting down in a tube. So we had oh, to cut the wow. ceilings off and lower it because the ceilings were five meters high nearly. And oh, when you're in a toilet that's five meters high, you do feel like something's gonna go whoosh and send you up in the air. <laughs> so um that was the one one. After having built the first pass at it, Angela said it's not gonna work. And it didn't, so we changed it. Yeah, I mean, that's the, it, it, it really is the sort of trial and error. And and I always try to remember, because my wife and I are like amateur house, resto- like we love restoration. And uh, and I watch the show and I go like, I can't imagine all the process that we're, that we're not seeing. Because you really, every episode has to have a certain amount of information in it. And it, you can't show everything. And the trial and error must be uh, daunting. Uh, it's interesting because it's not so much the trial and error, it's the length of time. Oh, uh, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> a selection. A selection. <laughs> Unbelievable. She bought me up a Scottish Harris tweed hat. Oh, oh, that's, oh, oh I just good. grabbed what I could yeah, say. No, 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 hold on. Here we go. Oh, there we that, go. That's, a, that's good. That's yeah, really yeah. good. I feel like the quiet man. Yeah. Come on, John Wayne. You see, this is the, exactly right for that, isn't it? <laughs> it okay. just, you just have to like shade the eyes a little bit so that it feels yeah, yeah. very mysterious. Where's Maureen O'Hara? I've got my own red head here, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> we were just, we just started talking. So first of all, before we get into the, well, you were talking about, talking about trial and error. And I said, it seems like there's so much that we don't see and how daunting of a task it must be to go through all of the trying things and they don't work. They don't all make the show. And you were about to say, it sounded like you were about to say, well, it's not as much as you think. But it's definitely not the trial and error because what, what it is, it's the process and it's the length of the process that I think is quite interesting because um, you can't see all the steps. Um, in the new series that's coming up, we did Jenny and Steve Angela's parents' bedroom. Yep. And it went from being a barn where they stored agricultural bits into a very large suite with a walk-in wardrobe, a steam room, marble inside, sunlight, sun pipes, letting the sunshine into the second floor down. And all of those things, you can't cover it all. No, well, it took a year and a half and it was a 47-minute show. (laughs) 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 And we did other things as well. So you didn't have to just watch that part of it. No, but this, this, this is why I think it's so, because we also just discovered the Escape to the Chateau DIY series which was like another i almost feel like discovering that show is like finding something that you find in your attic like where has this been because Uh i think what you just described like a year and a half down to a 47 minute show people watch your show and they go oh i could do that that's not that hard and my wife and i always go oh boy are they about to find out and so it feels like the show sort of makes it seem like oh and then everything just comes together but in actual apl- practical application, I say to my wife, like, well, not everyone's a former British Army engineer and not everyone uh, has all of the crafting skills and vision that Angel has. And I think they're about to find out. These other people are about to find out this is not an easy thing to do. I think stamina is... I was going to say that word um, because, you know, everything that We've we We've been do... together so long, I'm going to say stamina and Angela means it. You see? <laughs> It, it is. And you know, you know that bit, Chris, that you're just saying where it all comes together and, you know, the music changes and it goes, oh, isn't this wonderful? And, you know, everyone gets all at goose pimples. We get that too when we get to that at that stage. I call it the cushion moment. But I tell you, up until that moment, everything or, you know, the day before is kind of dusty and grubby. And then, you know, Dick's done all of the utilities. I mean, that's where all of the dog work is. And then you put some flowers out and some cushions and it all comes together. <laughs> and it's just, and it's wonderful. And everyone goes, oh, Angel, you're really clever. What is really important, I didn't let her get away with that. Angela has never got away with that because right from the very beginning, we've had to explain the implication of making a decision. And, you know, where do you want your sink the only place right. to have it is over here is said for a reason because gravity is involved mm-hmm. with waste leaving a, 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 a actual sink or um, yeah. a, a bath. And Angela understands that now. Doesn't change what she wants, but it does mean <laughs> she understands it when she makes the decision. Yeah, which means that if I, if I can understand that, anyone can understand it. I mean, we 
you are very intelligent, man. Dick is, uh, you know, he he has got the the a brain of an engineer, um, but I don't. So if I, if he explains something to me and I understand it, I believe most people could. Well, I, it, it just, you know, we constantly, first of all, are delighted that you both found each other because you you really have these very complementary skill sets, and I think it's one of the things that that really powers the show. But my but when we first started, we discovered your show during quarantine, and it was one of those magical things where you know we love watching renovation shows, and as soon as we we saw the aesthetic. Oh, the chateau, and we we love old buildings, we love old houses, we love almost everything we own is antique, um, and so we had six seasons to like it. It it guided us through so much of the quarantine in this wonderfully peaceful. Like, oh, we have Dick and Angel to watch tonight, so everything oh. feels like it's but feels like it's gonna be okay. But every time, like Dick, you would do something new, you go, where the fuck does this guy learn? Now he's a master chef. Who learns to do this? He's putting in an elevator. How does someone? So like, I, 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 I want to talk a little bit about y'all's backgrounds, which, you know, is are alluded to on the show. But I'm just curious as a fan uh, for you, Dick, where, is it, where do you learn to do all these things? And how do you get those things from your brain into your hands to manifest them? I'm old. <laughs> I've been around a long time. Hold on. I was an army officer when Angelo was being thought of. Just put it in the context. And when it comes down to sort of experience, I believe in saying yes and going through life doing things. Always have. And um, I, I've had three careers. My first career in the army, I was so fortunate. I, I, I led and commanded some really intelligent, bright soldiers and did some really interesting stuff. I had a ball. It was the first sort of uh, decade was on the uh, inner German border, waiting for the third East German shock army to come across. And then I was working in Berlin when the wall came down. And after that, it was counterterrorism. And I had 20 years of learning so much so quickly. Then after that, along came the, um, the sort of my middle career, which is troubleshooting for a big multinational. I did that. And then I became a tart. And as a tart, I, uh, you know, on telly, I just play and do things. Always cooked, always done, always worked in my own cars, always done those things. There's a series called Scrap Heap Challenge, known as Junkyard Wars. Oh, yeah. oh my God, you did Junkyard Wars. Oh, that's the show very was fantastic. first one. The very first one in 98, I, I captained one of the teams, and then I did it a couple of years with my brothers who were also in the army because I was a colonel, David was a, a major, Bobby was a captain, but they were much bigger than me. And we, we did that then. Uh, I sort of came to television a little bit later. And after that, it was just sort of saying yes and doing things. Yeah, but saying yes is, of course, that's certainly part of it. But you got to know how to do the stuff, you know, yeah, like well, I, I can say yes all I want. I'm not going to be able to install an elevator in my house, you know, without. Uh, you, could. I mean, you could. I, you know, I'm Dick's biggest fan, but I think you could, Chris. And and I just. We say most to, people can, don't we? We say most yeah, people can. I, I got to say, one of the reasons why I fell madly in love with, with Dick is that he has this passion. My boyish good looks. Yeah. <laughs> quite long hair when I met him um he <laughs> Dick like sucks the marrow out the bones of life yeah he just every little bit of life he wants to experience to to try to do and when I met him I fell in love with with that because it just you don't really say no to to no, say no to everything if I ask for it but just in terms <laughs> of experiencing life and trying new foods and flavors and experiences you just want you want to just like get life and go like that and and I was just mesmerized talking to, to Dick the first time and honestly we the first day we met we were just together after that it was just lovely his passion for life um is um What's the word I'm looking for? Extraordinary. I am one of the luckiest people you ever meet, Chris. Let's be very honest about this. The first time I met Angela, uh, we knew we were going to be at the same party because our we were introduced by a mutual friend. And literally, um, when I met her, I spent all my time looking her right between the eyes because she had a huge bosom and red lipstick. And a man over 50 should not dribble. And, that, <laughs> and, and, and so I just looked her between the eyes for all of our first conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing was... <laughs> was 50 and I was in my early 30s and it's very it was quite easy wasn't it to I mean this goes back to Chris's original point you know is that um there was 20 years difference and it's quite easy to sort of say oh no you know find yourself someone younger which he did do um and then you just thought no I'm just gonna go for it give it a go mm -hmm. <laughs> well what was your background Angel what because your you, you know your ability to kind of uh envision 
in the, a sort of a magical overlay over something and see it, it kind of like you, you almost see like a, like an augmented reality vision of what it should be. And then it becomes that thing. What what was your background? Well, I, I've got sort of like I had two two careers that run parallel. One made uh, made me money and paid my mortgage and one I just did for the fun of it. So I was um, an accountant um, for quite cool companies, actually, like a record company, a model agency. I was the accountant that um, if you didn't really like accountants, you would get me get me in because I sort of I guess aesthetically I looked different. And I did that for a good 15 years and I absolutely loved it. And what it gave me because I actually secretly love a spreadsheet. Um, and I'm quite organized is it gave me the ability to run projects organizations the wedding business has been quite important um, to you know paying for the chateau you know there's this misconception that the, uh, um, the channel uh, pays for it they don't we pay for it out of our money that we earn so for the business side it was great but my whole life I've thrifted you know I I didn't spend my pocket money on on sweets I went down to the boot sales or the charity shop and just bought secondhand things like fur jackets, tea sets, like any everything. And I, I, I just, I just collected it. And by the time sort of I was in my early twenties, I was doing sort of market stalls and just sort of like um, little tea parties. And um, and one day I had a bit of a shot with a, a collective in Brick Lane in East, East London. And I was doing this party, and this um, quite cool like journalist come up to me. It was just like. Um, I really love your little business, she said, which was like printing T-shirts on on cakes and um, so printing um, images on T-shirts, wrapping them up like cakes and then sort of sending them out. And it was going OK. But she said, I love your business. But actually, where you really make where you shine, she said, is you should just do what you're doing. So like run events for a living. Um and she said, if you start a business, I'll give you your first bit of press. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Um, so within a within a month, um, I had a website and I called myself the Vintage Patisserie um, and she launched me. Um, I'm always thankful to um, to her. And um, and then it just rolled and rolled and rolled. I had this gorgeous team of, of like tattooed vintage girls working for me. Um, and I just thought, you know, I've always been um, business minded. The world is my empire. And I just thought, right, I'm going to go on a show. This is pre Mr. Strawbridge called Dragon's Den. You got something similar? Shark's Den. Shark's oh, Shark's Den. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Shark's Den in the UK, yeah. So I went on um, and I got an investment, which it, it didn't happen in the end. Um, but a lady saw me on television who happens to be our mutual friend who's sort of like our our, our agent that, that, that met us. Um, and after that moment, sort of just, I was just in events doing what, we'd, what we were doing. Angela's left out a very, very important thing here, Chris, and that is her work ethic. And that is the bit that, you, you know, doesn't, has to be acknowledged right from the very beginning. When I first met Angela, she thought nothing of sort of working through the night and then doing three events on, on, in the next day to get it all right. done. This girl is driven. You are completely driven. And even now with all the things, we've got a lot of things going on here. And Angela has got, she's on it all. And she's just, the work ethic, you know, all right, I tend to do the slightly later sort of into the night type working. Angela's regularly up at four in the morning doing emails, catching up with things, getting things planned for the next day when we have people coming in, keeping the work going. So as a work ethic, it's unbelievable. That's a huge part of being successful because if you have an extra 50% of your day compared to other people, you do 50% more. Right. But but you also have this sort of perfect balance. But, and the reason that it seems like it works is because you have this really perfect balance of all these different things where it's like, oh, there's there's enough business skill, but there's enough artistic vision. There's enough engineering knowledge. There's enough. There's this like this like magical chest of all of these things that are perfectly Aww. balanced. And because a lot of people are more one than the other. It's like, oh, well, I have the you know, I have all the engineering skills, but maybe not necessarily the artistic vision to understand how to manifest it in a way that's pleasing or aesthetic, you know, but you guys have all of that perfectly balanced. But we have it balanced together, I, w I probably have to, to say, because yeah, we, yeah. we, we definitely have, you know, um, our our skills and, and weaknesses. Um, mm. But I would say that most entrepreneurs um, 
are quite rounded people. I mean, you know, you're never going to be good at everything. And that's just life, isn't it? Um, but as an entrepreneur, you have to um, you have to wear hats. You have to understand every element of your business and truly understand it and do it before you can be successful. Because how do you know where things go wrong um, if um, if you don't know uh, what's going on? We are a good partnership. We're an odd couple, and we are the ultimate odd couple. Have a little look at the two of us together, and it is odd. But it works completely. And do you want to know something? Um, us coming together was, didn't make sense. It's illogical, right? You can't write the story. I was born in Burma in 1959. In 1978 in Essex, so this little girl that was born, yeah? And the two of us met sort of 50 years after I was born. And we got together. We hit it off, fell in love quickly. And we've made our life together. You can't write that script. I mean, we it's live, ridiculous. We live in a bloody castle. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Make this story up. <laughs> But those are all so I think I think, you know, when people probably watch your show and they go, I want to be like Dick and Angel. And I and I and I think but really look at what makes what I think sort of makes Dick and Angel, which is number one, you both fully embrace, you know, who you are and you embrace who you are and you really lean in to who you are, because the more you embrace your own uniqueness, the more, the less uh, like, and the less competition you have with anything else, and so you both come together and create this very specific, unique molecule, <laughs> the chemistry that you create together. But you both kind of do the same thing, and the ticket you seem to embrace everything that you love, that you are an angel. You do that as well. But then on top of that, you've managed to find a way to do it together. And I think the the other sort of lesson is kind of the relationship lesson of like. When two people come from very different places, how do you find compromise and how do you how do you get to know each other? You go, okay, well, I may not know everything about this, so I'm going to turn this over to my partner and vice versa. And how do you how do you find the complementary relationship between the two of you? Neither of us comp- uh, compromise. Oh, we argue, we, we argue we, like cat and dog. We, no, we, don't, <laughs> we don't compromise because actually, it, it, through compromise comes mediocrity. And you can't just give up on an idea. And the two of us bang it out to get the right answer. And we we have this thing in our life where we've both got a veto. Okay, so either of us can stop something. And we can, but we have to find a way forward that is right. And that keeps the integrity of who we are and what we're doing. Yeah, so you can't just say no. It's like it's a no, but no, not this, but we have to do this yeah, yeah. to move forward. And you have to you have to move on and go forward. It's interesting because the fact that we pay for everything, we do everything for the for the chateau ourselves, means that nobody has ever told us what we can do. This right. is not like a, a television set where somebody has a really good idea and what how about doing this? Uh uh-uh. uh doesn't work out. You don't dip your hand into our pocket and spend our money. We do what we want to do and people can follow us doing it. And I think that I, mindset is something that we have been very protective of because it's too easy to become a caricature of yourself right. unless you actually are mm. true to yourself. Yeah. Also, I think it's given the show integrity, you know, um, because, um, you know, we, we do things that we, we like doing. And, you know, if there's a trend in something, we're probably not going to do it. I mean, God, choosing the children's names, something that you, I don't know if you're doing right now. <laughs> oh, it was a, it took us it took us nine months i mean and dick had to every name we come up with he looked on to see if it was in the top you know one million and if it was it was like eh, eh. <laughs> how are you coping with that at the moment chris <laughs> well we are you know what's funny is that we um uh we, i feel like lydia and i have a very complimentary relationship in that way too and we both as as like restorate as amateur restorers we have, we both have the same aesthetic and we work very well together and I know what my strengths are and I feel like I know when like oh this is something Lydia is much better at and that by the way that's most things but <laughs> she knew almost right away first of all she knew she was pregnant after a week and a half she just was like I feel different I don't know something and she went to the doctor and found out so she's just so on top of stuff and so, so well organized she knew what she wanted the name to be. I mean, we've known the gender for a while. We haven't, we're not, we're actually having a, a small outdoor gathering tonight where we're going to tell our friends. Oh, um, wonderful. We're going to screen, uh, we're going to screen the new Halloween movie and then we're going to tell them right before, oh, here's the gender and then screen Halloween because we both love horror. But she knew what she wanted the name to be like months ago. And I was like, wow, that's a really cool name. And so we've already, she just knew. Oh, that's, well that is amazing. Oh, I actually just genuinely got goosebumps when you just said that you have all your friends over and that you're going to let them all know. That is just. Oh, we haven't seen, we haven't seen, we haven't seen people in so long, but, but it's, 
you know, if, if it's okay to share a little story with you that I feel like falls in the Dick and Angel universe, which is when we were dating very early on, Lydia had gotten a job offer in, she was wor- shooting a show in North Carolina, I think. And I had just kind of restored a house and I love to go antique shopping. You know, there's a hand. We don't have the kind of antiques you have in France. Uh, and they've gotten exponentially more expensive in the last 10 years. But anyway, I found these two like Griffin sconces at a, at a secondhand place in Hollywood. And I had put them up um, outside my house. And Lydia and I got to know each other via FaceTime. This is me holding the FaceTime phone. Which is a great way to get to know each other. So I'm showing her like, oh, I just put up these these sconces that I found at an antique place. And she goes, wait, go back. And I go, what? And she goes, those sconces. She goes, I have those. And I go, oh, yeah, no, you mean you have ones like them? And she goes, no, 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 I have those fucking sconces. I got them at a sale in, in England. And then I remember that the guy that I got them from was like, oh, they came from a castle in England. No shit. When she showed me her sconces, they're the same sconces, the same. (laughs) And so we mounted them in our living room. So they stare across from each other. But how did this happen? Write the script script where a castle in England ends up with two different rooms of people who get to know each other. You can't do the odds. I'm a mathematician. You can't do the odds. (laughs) That's what makes it more important. I know. And you're a mathematician and, and I'm a soppy romantic. And, you know, I just, things like that, I just think, you you know, it's, it's meant to be, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, you have to be, sort of think like that. But you I also, I feel like you, you, you also have this really great um, sense that everything's going to work out no matter what. And maybe part of that is your philosophy of like, the goal is to move forward. The goal is not to be right. The goal is not to, the goal is just to move forward. But, it, but would you agree that you feel like, listen, Things work out however they work out. May not be exactly what you envisioned, but they can they can work out better than what you thought. So don't be too rigid. But, but, but Chris, the big thing about when it comes to understanding, having optimism going forward, I think it's really interesting the fact that we can do anything. People can do anything. And there's an awful lot of jeopardy. Oh, you can imagine if you're looking at us doing uh, doing up the shadow. Oh, where this goes wrong, what happens? Did I? We didn't have that. The two of us never had that jeopardy because we knew we were going to live here and keep doing it forever. Yeah. And consequently, the whole idea of, you know, what's going to happen, it didn't matter because it was going to work out in the end. We had a plan that meant that we failure wasn't actually part of the story. We're just going to go and do what we were going to do and love it. Well, we weren't going to fail because we were going to keep going until we succeeded. Mm -hmm. And that was just how it was going to sort of happen. And honestly, the first couple of years, oh, we were properly, properly broke. Like, you know, we we were were hand to mouth. I mean, the money for the lift was, uh, you know, money for weddings were coming in and it would literally come in our bank and I'd be like, you know, transferring it for the, for the lift. (laughs) You know, it it was kind of that, that hand to mouth. And I'd have a little joke with the bride sort of, saying oh thank, thanks to the lift guys <laughs> you know and, <laughs> and they, they loved it and we had a we had a really nice wedding where I remember Ian he got really a bit, a bit drunk and the next morning of his hangover he said oh Dick I would have paid double for you double for your wedding and you kept going on for me for, for <laughs> a, a long time but it, it wasn't it's not just about that he he what he sort of said to us I paid double for it but I'm really happy to have had our, our, my wedding with you and to be part of re- restoring and for it they got like wedding of their lifetime so it's just you know it, it, that's an inter- it's an interesting balance because what is really important is to believe and you know right it, it, and it, and it's not it's not spiritual and all the rest of it. it is have the confidence and you can do anything and hold on the castle was built in um 1868 this this particular there's one here from the 12th century that and the bits of it were used to make this chateau in oh, wow. 18, yeah. 1874 and we've got all the wood and the stone is all from the original 12th century castle built to keep the british out they really messed up there didn't they <laughs> and it but it was built from those materials and they built it at a time when they didn't have any tools we are now in the 21st century anything we do we can do I've got a cherry picker that comes up and looks through this bedroom window. They didn't. They had ladders and bits of wood and stuff. And I think yeah. the whole mindset, we have always believed mm-hmm. we can do it. And by making decisions through thinking, we always believed that the business would, would, would be successful. We, we, we just felt that that was the way forward. And Angela had a successful hospitality business in London. I was a chef. I, 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 you know, I, as, as well as other you things. You kind of left that out, didn't you? Yeah. You forgot to talk about it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, just a chef. I was just having to be a master chef on this, but whatever. It's not a big deal. Yeah. No, what 
well, it is. But but because of your celebrity status, you did go on um, Celebrity Monster, yeah. and you got to the final, and it was a. Uh... <laughs> I, I, I can cook. He, he comes I can second. cook. I can cook, and um, Boy, we've, we've, cook. we've run restaurants, have done various things, and and I, and that side of life to me is my hobby. I love it. Yeah, and, and we have, we're very food oriented between us. We've probably written what a, a, nearly a dozen cookery books and food books between us because it's something that's big in our life, and it's something that hospitality and cooking is all part of what we do. And I think that's where it becomes quite interesting because um, you don't. How can you fail if we're going to come move into a castle and eat good French? The wine is so good. By the way, you're very good help. We're sitting here buzzing the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's 10 o'clock in the morning here, but where you are, it's like probably 5, 6 in the afternoon. Oh, no, it's 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, yeah. you're not drinking wine at 10 o'clock. Why? <laughs> <laughs> this is France. He's having a party later. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're, I'm, I've, I've got my, uh, my, my latte drink in the morning. But how do you know when to ask for help? Like, how do you know... You know, like, because obviously you can have this, like, I'm going to, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And at a certain point, hmm, I think I need to either delegate this or ask someone for help. How do you know when to make that move? We're not good at that. We're not good at that. <laughs> to be fair, help, asking for help, I'd much rather sort of struggle up for four flights of stairs with a cast iron ba- uh, bath in my back than ask somebody to hold the other end of it. And <laughs> right. you just get on and do things rather than sort of asking. So between the two of us, we watch each other and help where we can help. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I need help, I'll, I'll ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if Dick needs help, he'll ask me. And we, you know, we've over over the years, like when when we used doing plaster plastering, we got plasterer in. You yeah. know, we had some really dodgy plasterers here as well. Yeah. Um, and then we met Steve, who's called Builder Mate Steve, um, and he, he came like a knight in shining armor, uh, didn't whip us off, and actually did a really good day's work, didn't he? So he so worked where, for a living. He's a decent lad. Yeah. yeah. So so where we have needed to, we got we've got a roof. We're in Ian, who gets out of this window, is a you know a sort of sturdy guy, and the window that he used to get out of in the attic is about is about this big. Like this big <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen. Yeah, the listen. I'm not a heights person, and watching a guy scamper across the top of that roof is like is like I just I can feel the panic setting in. That was Pascal. Yeah. The first one you oh, saw Pascal. was Pascal. He, he, he walked through the house, didn't he? He was so And yeah, the girl was cold. hanging out of the corner of his Bag. mouth. Yeah, it, it wasn't even sticking out. It was hanging off his lip. It was hanging down. And he gets up on the roof and he walks. He climbs awesome. the little hole, walks on there, whistling. You know, what you, Roger Whittaker. He, and he was whistling as well. <laughs> Though, did he? Yeah. And they managed to capture it on the drone, yeah, yeah. which was just incredible. I mean, he really didn't have a clue what was going on, and um, yeah. you know, so so where I mean, you don't, you know, we. I think, I think, in, instinctively, you know where your limits are. And the, the thing is, we were fund limited. Our money was a limitation, and so that's why, to begin with, we did so much more before we started building up a team to have weddings and do things. And that's the old bit where you kiss a lot of frogs before you get your princes and your princesses. Right. And finding a team of people to work with, anybody in business, especially small businesses, will tell you that's the big thing. You've right. got to find the right people. Mm-hmm. And we have we've we've got some people we met in our first year here who are still working with us all the way. And Steve is one of them. Mentioned Tina. There's other people who have been, and we've even got a camera crew that have been with us for years because they come and they. They get sort of, um, they become part of the family. Arthur and Dorothy have grown up with our people who are the Chateau Helpers, and they're all family. They grow up with our camera crews, and who they know, because we don't want a big turnover of people here. We just right. want people to respect what's going on and be nice. And well, so what we've managed to do is we've managed to get really good people. Well, that's great. And, and you know, just he, he, understanding and sort of hearing like how many fail points there could be, like, like you know, like if you think about it like a structure... I don't mean like failure, failure, but like just failure points for the infrastructure that you've created. It's like everyone kind of has to have the same vision. Everyone has to, you know, like bring their A game. And I watched this other show, like the DIY show. Was that educational for you just kind of watching and sort of learning, like knowing so many things that can go wrong in this sort of resurrection? directing of, of an old property and try to run it like a business. Was there a general kind of philosophical thing that you saw that recurred in the ones that didn't work? Like what sort of, what, what were the biggest stumbling blocks for people who were trying to also pursue this? Naivety. I think naivety is something that we don't have in, in the same way. And when it comes to, and we, 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 we're not involved in that at the minute, the, that series at all, but the people we have dealt with who are still our friends, we have tried to talk and sort of add business and common sense to their dream. 
And I think that's a huge it, thing for us. It is. And, because naivety where you sort of, you know, people who want to start a tea room, which is, you know, little mom and pop's tea room, and then keep a massive 50-room castle, that right. does not equate. You cannot make that money from making tea. <laughs> selling tea. Chateau. And and but that's that's the naivety factor. Whereas you know the the ability to use what you have, we searched for four years to find our chateau, and the chateau that we found was gave us what we wanted. You can always talk about the flow, yeah. but we, when we, we when people well, come to visit us, we talk to them. We, we we talk to them all about the business things that we've done and the process and the minus. And we we do talk a lot to people, just try and inform them of what we have done so that they can use and use the advertising that comes with the telly as best they can to sort of do what they want to do in life. Is there a, a, any kind of, I don't know, is, is, is there a way when you're really up against it? You know, it's like, I watch a lot of these, I watch these shows where it just feels like, how are these people going to survive this? You know, like, is there a point where you, say like, well, okay, maybe this is too much. Maybe this isn't for me. Or do you feel like there's always a solve? Is there always a way around? I think there is always a way through it, but you have to put your thinking cap on. And I know it sounds ridiculous. Um, and my biggest role, I think, when we were doing the um, DIY show, we haven't done it for a number of years now, um, was honestly, it was spreadsheets. I mean, we might have a talk about, you know, the, the latest paint for tea towels and, and what is, you know, the, the newest lost of paint. But when it comes down to it, yeah. we are talking about how much they're charging for their for their rooms and, and how they're turning them around and, and how, how you can structure their business business to to get you have to get thousands not not hundreds um and it's tens of thousands you know and and we always sort of when we first started our business i know we sort of it's a bit of a thing but it basically is the backbone of what we're doing is that we started a roof fund <laughs> like, yeah. and, it, and there was, it was negative for a number of years um but we always said that we're going to put a little bit in a little bit in this roof fund because actually at some point we was going to need um we had five to ten years what we knew we'd need a new roof on right. the chateau and that can break you. It can break you. And I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, 100 odd grand that you need. And then you probably need a similar figure for your um, your windows and um, and all of these things. And it, it's one of those things because we've got young children and, you know, in an ideal world, we have no idea what they're going to do. But in an ideal world, they'll take over the chateau and they'll, and they'll live it. And can you imagine how aggravated they're going to be where they take it over we're six feet under and they're like realization they've got to find a couple of hundred grand to do the window <laughs> yeah, it's the going roof. to go up by that point it's going to be even more yeah. there's going to be more <laughs> repair exactly. they're going to be so like oh mom dad you left us a chateau with all what this did you do <laughs> <laughs> that, that has been. I'm not driven joking. Us. That, has, that driven has driven us to get money in this in this roof fund, and we have worked our fingers to the bone to make sure that the kids don't have to inherit um, a chateau without a roof. And um, and this year, it's you haven't got this season yet on Peacock, um, but we are doing the roof. It's the roof. oh good. Oh, good. Yeah, the new season is, is, I think it's coming at the same time it's airing over there as well, right? Like, we're getting yeah, it all at the same very time. Soon. Yeah. Very soon. Should we turn? This is quite a lovely view. Can you can you turn the... Okay, um, sorry, sorry. Here we go. You ready for this? Yes. We're going to, oh, this is our um, window. We're looking oh, at... Oh, wow. You see the sun's set over there. The, sun, the sun's gone down. Oh, I see the scaffolding. Can yeah. you see the scaffolding? Wow. That's because this side of the chateau... Um, where the, the, the scaffolding's up. Uh, we were all going to it in pieces, but because we've got no functions, we've gone for the... Um, gone for it. We've gone for it, and we've actually... The place has been completely done over. It's amazing. God, and it's, it, a, it's, it feels so good. It's really so, quite, it's so cool. Like, as a, as a fan, that's a really fun to see. I, you know, I, the thing that I feel bad for you guys about is that, like, people don't really get to see all of the work. You know, it's like, we see this highlight reel, you know, of the show... Minutes. But all of the work that gets done, and I think it's such a great metaphor for life and problem solving is that, you know, our lives are like this chateau and they can be this dilapidated structure. And if you thought about everything you'd have to do all at once to make the whole thing perfect, you'd never do it because it's too much. But it seems like you focus on every little corner, every little thing you can, figure out what you can prioritize, and then just build it up from there. And that's been such the fun journey the last six seasons of the show is is just like, okay, we did this, which laid the foundation for us to now address this. And now it's unlocked this whole new series of challenges, and now we're going to solve this new bunch of stuff. 
Chris, you just nailed that. And, and we have this thing we talk about, it, you eat an elephant a bite at a time. Okay? <laughs> but you have to know where to start. And that's right. a really important part of it. And having a, an idea which way you go through it. We are, we're doing stuff in the chateau. And it's interesting because we've been here seven years. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, in fact, we found the chateau um, this- seven years ago this month. We, so that's when we found the chateau. And in that time, we've done a lot of stuff. Angela found a room she didn't know existed in the attic. I, she had never been up there. I, I didn't even think about it. The only way to get up was through a ladder in a hole, and it's and, and she'd never been up. I didn't. I, I didn't even compute with me because I'd been up there putting the expansion tank in for the hot water system. But I, she'd never we, been. we are we're you know what we're still exploring this this place, and there's rooms in the outbuildings we haven't been in, and there's parts of it that I love the mystery and suspense. Is why I've always loved thrifting. I think you can relate to this. You know, you go somewhere, you have got sort of balmy hands because you don't know what you're going to find. Um, and I don't want that excitement to be to be over. Now, I mean, this particular room upstairs, I don't think anyone's going to believe that not being up there, but I generally hadn't. Um, it, it's the it's where all the apexes are in the house. Um, and when Dick just said to me there was another room, I honestly just thought it would be you know a couple of a feet, loft space, a loft yeah. space, a couple of feet high, and it wasn't particularly very easy to get into. And I just didn't have the you know the desire. And then because we're doing our roof, I just went up literally just to see how everyone was doing, and realised there was a whole another whole like <laughs> floor floor <laughs> was there so, stuff in there was there more like fun no there, there, there was fish. actually there were some terracotta pots and bits mm. of stuff I, really who would up. have carried terracotta pots up six stories to put it in the loft i have no idea it was mainly grubby to be fair because the Good floor view. below is much okay. easier uh, to access oh, but the view was stunning it is you know you can see over to to the town um and so we are we are doing something in this series where we sort of embrace that <laughs> that's really money. great but you also never know like you, you do you have this fantasy that somewhere in the walls is some sort of vast treasure like that it, oh my gosh okay <laughs> this is that's weird that you just said that so <laughs> 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 we haven't found treasure yet um but i've actually got that that fancy um and um it we're just doing up so at the moment we are in the honeymoon suite we are camping in the honeymoon suite because we have just moved out of our strawberry suite um so the kids are getting older they need a little bit more space you know they've gone from cots to to beds and and they just need a little bit of privacy so we said right uh, we're going to do up our, our strawberry suite to meet our, our desires um and you said to me, I think there's a cavity in the wall. So I said, um, well, we need to see if there is a cavity. <laughs> we got, got a, what did you get, a drill? What was no, it? it was a big hammer, actually. A big hammer. A big hammer and a cold a chisel. We got a cold chisel. And we put one of those sticks through and it was... Those sticks is a camera. We had a, we had a camera no, for checking... No, it was a stick first to see oh, how no, the first, deep the first it was. Oh, no, the first one was a stick to see how deep. Yeah, oh, that's right. And it was, what was it, a foot? Yeah, it's about a foot, 18 inches deep. Yeah, and behind, so 18 inches all the way, and they put a stud wall up, um, and there was, we put a camera in, and there was stunning wallpaper behind it. So first of all, you was you said to me, um, I don't know if we should take it down. It's a lot of work for only a foot. And I said, um, I don't understand why they have to put a stud wall up. There must be treasure in there, and it's going to eat me alive. <laughs> this wall down. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> this is, Angela could not live without the wall I being couldn't. knocked down just in case there was treasure in there. Why would they put up a stud wall for just a foot? Why anyway, would they hide? Like, I don't understand. I'm trying to find a picture. Well, so first of all, this room that we're in now, our house was built in 1928. And you never know what you're going to find when you open walls when you're renovating. And it could be something horrible like asbestos or it could be, you know, we found coffee cans in the walls like from the 20s. But these wood beams above my head, there was a drywall ceiling. And we, this, was, this is our media room. So there's a big TV on the other side of here. And so we were going to put speakers in the ceilings. And when they poked a hole in the drywall, they go, oh, there's, it looks like there's beams under here. And I don't know if you can see, but these beams oh. are hand painted. Um, oh yeah! Oh wow! Had, they had been um, someone at some point had just covered them up, and I guess in the twenties, during in the late twenties, early thirties, during Prohibition, this might have been like a speakeasy room because there's a little a uh, little bar area over there, and um, and so we saw like oh my god, there's like hand painted beams, so we just ripped all the drywall out and exposed Absolutely. the beams. Absolutely. But you it's- never know until you start poking into holes and looking around, you know. But it doesn't always pay off. But we, 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 we've got a part of our attic upstairs, which as you go into the attic, 
just round to the corner to the left, it's really full of rubbish. It's piled rubbish. And there's a desiccated pigeon carcass there that's probably 20 years old. And it's a really, and it's, it's been up there, died in the, uh, I think, 20 years ago, and it's just crispy and it sits there. And because of this dead pigeon carcass, which is it's, it's dry, there's nothing wrong with it, nobody's ever been there except for me. And I had, oh, a little, wow. had a little peek in that corner. I said, we're saving that to be one of the last things we explore. But as I said, that I looked down and I saw the barrel of a gun. So I looked down on the floor and I pulled this out and pulled out a 17th century musket. Oh, from my the, from the God. Edge. This is all piled up to the corner. And remember, we, we, we actually find a, an eight foot tall oil painting in one part of the loft as well of, of, of a saint with a big hole in it. But, the, but but in this corner, there's so many bits and pieces. And literally pulled out a complete musket with the firing mechanism gone and another barrel for an old musket. And now that is – no, we haven't been any further in there yet. And this corner is waiting to be explored because, as Angela says, we don't want the dream to end just yet. And I want Arthur and Dorothy – to be old enough to have enjoyed the search that Angela and I have had. You've even got yeah. you've even got boxes up there you haven't looked through yet. Exactly. I mean, they are um, look full of spiders, and I'd like a little bit more time on my hand. But I just, you know, I just love that that idea. You, you know, mm. like, have you have you looked at every part of your house now? Like, is there I, any I, corners that are? No, there aren't any corners really. That I well, we haven't really spent much time in the attic, but it doesn't really seem like there's anything up there. But we found out that the previous owners who kind of resurrected this house had been abandoned for a couple of years and they found a bunch of, there was a couple who lived here for like 50 years. We're only the fourth owners and they found in the attic um, their love letters, but they donated them to, uh, they donated them to some historical society or something. So that was at least good, but we didn't, we didn't find anything, but we're renovating another place. I don't know if you can see this in the zoom chat, but I'm going to send you a link to, um, uh, there was a, a low ceiling in one of the bathrooms that we're renovating. And we, f- when we pulled it out, we found original wallpaper underneath, but it's so, it's like a hundred years old, but it's so old and it's connected to plaster, not drywall. So yeah. we're trying to figure out like, can we cut it out and at least frame it because it's not savable and we can't peel it off. Are we able to click on that link? Oh yeah. I'm just doing it now. I'm just, oh. I was enjoying the story. Hold on. There we go. Oh, oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, if, 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 if you were to zoom in, you'd really see like the detail. It just has this gorgeous, and it, who knows how many decades that was hidden under the thing. And we're really torn about it because we're like, do we make it a border? But we can't because like it's crumbling in a lot of places. So I think, I think like inspired by your show, we're just going to try to cut as much of a piece out as we can and frame it so that it, at least we're preserving some of it. It's really vibrant in terms of the the, the color, um, but I think I think you can chip that out definitely. But make sure you've just had like lots of photographs, really high resolution photographs before uh, you know. Because Angela's had stuff thing. remade from photographs. It's not yeah, yeah, and it's not the same. But actually, you could um, you save you save the history. Yeah, you save the history because actually you can quite easily get that into a repeat. I could do it for you if you want. Um, yeah, but, but you but can see, you can create that and then have like that one piece that you save just to, to so you can reference because I think that's that's nice. such a great idea I know you've done that on the show too and that's that that's a great idea I'll do that I'll take a really high res picture and and we'll see if we can recreate it we've also put frames around bits that we had problem saving because it, it was a very small we put a frame around it and just kept it and then done the whole wall around it except for a small frame of the original and so that that's up in, mm. in the boudoir yeah. suite and we've also behind a cupboard find a sort of a, a, a late um, 1890s newspaper that had been stuck on the wall behind a cupboard just act as insulation with recipes and everything mm. else on it so we've just kept on the wall and varnished and just kept it as part of the wall covering because it's more interesting than wallpaper or paint soon as it goes you've forgotten about it you've, it's, a, it's a, a year or two a decade it was never there that's the problem you know you need that you need to sort of keep that that history so what we we have tried to keep the history in this particular place and i think it's it's nice to have those moments to to, to look back and kind of mm-hmm. have that association and we're still friends with the original owners the baglionis and it's nothing that it's never 
it's not part of the television show. It happens sort of alongside. But when we when we first bought the show, um, Jack Bag, um, sorry, yeah, the, the mm. um, Jack Baglioni um, was here when we when we rocked up, and I mean, he, him and Dick, they, they loved each other. They were so. He's a good man. It was that? very sort of like very know, very, very sort of um, ha ha men together type thing. It's sort of like it, it I, ate the the English, I ate the fridge, and then he when he found out that our little girl was called Dorothy, um, he skipped. I remember this moment he skipped to you to tell you that um his great grandma great great grandmother great grand great great grandma was dorothy longfell who actually built the chateau and oh, he wow and he as you know this Dorothy's alpha man yeah. he, he was like dorothy's come home and it was so he was so emotional about it and he has loved he's so proud um of of seeing the house come back and all the little bits the wolf you know which they told us about and the fact that they you know we have all the architects plans and and we know all the costings for all of that that's all thanks to jack they gave us the plans from the original architect that dorothy <laughs> commissioned to build the place and we got given all of this stuff just freely given to us because we were the custodians <gasps> And then about, what was it, upstairs in the attic about six months ago, I found Jack's pyjamas from when he was, what, six months? <laughs> That's crazy. And he them and washed them and ironed them. And I said, I'll ping them to you when I see you he next. Tried, he tried them on, right? Like, did he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it was a hand puppet. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think it's also, you know, again, knowing what I think, I mean, obviously – even though I've been on TV for a long time, I still fall into the same trap of like, I watch a show and I feel like, oh, I know these people. <laughs> but uh, but what I feel like I know about you is that I feel the vicarious joy that you must feel living in basically this this amazing vintage store of all this stuff. But I think the other really great lesson is this sort of, uh, the, fa- the this sort of found item philosophy of like, things are the, like, things are imperfect but they're perfect like the way that you find them and and even though they're like you couldn't engineer them sorry to use engineer but you couldn't engineer them to look any better it's like they're just perfect the way they are and so how much can we preserve that integrity and kind of fold it into what we're doing well that's that's it and enjoy it the thing is everything is and there's a uniqueness to the things that we save and we keep and and you've always said that's been your thing isn't it yeah it it is i always celebrate imperfections i mean i say it so much that arthur has actually stolen my strap line (laughs) so (laughs) every now and again i'll look at him and he'll say i know it's yours mummy (laughs) so Mm -hmm. but it's like celebrate imperfections you know even if it's in in us or anything around give me a pot of gold paint and i will uh, paint it into something um you know in a piece of china why not <laughs> the whole thing is that um you can look at things in so many different ways why not do it with a smile and that, that that's something that um you know one of the things about what we are doing is we know how lucky we are every time we take the children to school angela and I make a point of both of us driving them to school and we try and collect them at lunchtime together and we collect them and the, 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 so the four of us go in and out when we, we take them to school it's only a mile and a half and we just go around we, we, we head up there but when we come into the driveway we still smile and we still smile about where we are. And we smile now because of all the work that's going on at the front and all the rest of it. And we smile at that, you know, the, the petal is there, the dog's sort of barking away, the geese are. We smile about those things because actually you work hard and you deserve rewards. And that's part of the mentality that I think we thoroughly enjoy. Yeah, well, you earn that too. But also, is there ever a done? You know, my wife always says to me, like, are we ever going to be done with, rest- with renovating? And I go, ah, uh, no. Like, I don't know, because it sort of feels like the know. process of it is kind of exhilarating, even as much as it can be frustrating. And you know that like 40% of the things are going to go wrong and, you know, but you still just, it's still fun to do because you get to, it's like you live in this art piece, basically. It's yours. You know, yeah. it's our train set. And remember that when we bought the Chateau, it was a price of a little bed sit in East London to buy our castle with all the yeah. land and the buildings. And that's, you can live that life in London. And Angela was a London girl. Yeah, I, I get all of that. I'm a country boy. And the idea of having all we have for that, all right, costs quite a lot over time to get it all fixed up. You know, when you add, you, mm-hmm. you know, it is it is where you put your focus of your life, your resources and everything else. But what it does do is it sort of, it's a decision that's made that you have to enjoy. And you, who wants it to stop? I would that's quite like, I would quite like to potter in my walled garden. 
the, my world garden is my is my joy. It's it, and I say my Angela's now actually become a bit of a land girl, and she, you get it now, don't you? The kids get it, and we go out there as a family now into the garden. It, I've seduced lovely. you to the dark yeah. side. It is always about getting that balance in life, isn't it? And um, you know, we have been up against some really tight deadlines for events and different bits and pieces. Um, and at those moments, um, you know, you can feel um, a, a different way, but we always know we're going to get through it, um, and and it's always. Fine. And if it was done, which I don't think is a real, real thing in sort of an old house. I think we'd be a bit I think we'd be a bit lo- lost. So what do we, I don't what know. Do, we do? <laughs> Should we, we fix the oh it's already and then Dick just goes around and he starts breaking shit to like, oh I gotta fix the sorry. To. It naturally <laughs> falls apart. I think yeah. it just does. I think I'd like to try it. Like I don't know. We, we try, so, we'd like so. to try done for a bit, wouldn't it? <laughs> just for one summer. We try one summer of done. It'd be tough. It'd be really tough because it's, it just always feels like, oh, there's always something to fix or something to upgrade or something to save or something to restore. And it just, you know, we, we've, I've watched a lot of the, the other thing that I love that we love about your show is also we've watched a lot of British restoration shows. And what seems to happen in, in particularly in the UK is that. Uh, and I guess it's just because people are so used to looking at old buildings. Like my wife and I are like, why would you ever rip out all the original tile and put in like white marble? But we see on the a lot of British restoration shows where they'll take like a historic building and they'll go and they're bringing it into the 21st century. And everywhere I hear those words, I go, God damn it. No, because you're going to put this like glass box thing in this old structure. And I, I'm sure from an architect's endpoint that's a real feat but it always guts me because i just feel like oh my god you just you didn't want an old house you wanted a new house why didn't you just build the new why did you rip out all the, the all the cool old stuff in there but chris you're so so right the difficulty is we had to bring this into the 21st century we had no toilets water heating sewage anything and you know the fact that when you flush the you know, your poop goes in the moat not a good thing you know what I mean? no, no, that part of bringing the 21st century is good. It's just the design aesthetic. So yeah, what we yeah. had to do, what we had to exactly. do, what we had to do is find a way of hiding it. And that, and what's really interesting for the design, Angela had to find a way where we could hide the poop pipes so nobody could ever see them because we didn't want to spoil yeah. the shadow. But I didn't, but sort of agreed. But we didn't sort of put, you know, an extension no, no, no. on the back that was, um, no, you know, no. yeah. a shiny, yeah, no, no, a no. shiny little box. No, it would have to be sympathetic. We have done our domes, which were oddly um, contemporary, but they were quite cool because they sort of stood alone in the forest. I quite, I quite like those. But well, we completely, completely agree with you. I mean, you still sort of go on about some some of the people we've watched that have just taken up sort of floors and you know literally it just feels like they're um yeah. they're murdering something you know you just you're feeling it going no no stop it <laughs> take out all this old tile no don't take out the old tile oh no uh, it goes down, it's in slow motion and you're like oh, we saved broken. every tile that was on our doorstep mm. and andrew's <laughs> dad scraped every single one off with a grinder to make it back to normal so we could reuse everything yeah. he spent days and days you just, just for a little spent, patch spent months yeah. my dad did he likes to sort of make things long yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. But, but just to save some a little bunch of tiles when there's much easier ways and that's because you know it's been there for 150 years why wouldn't we keep it has it been weird at all like the success of the show because you know you're for you guys obviously you've, you've worked in television before but then you know you take on this project as an actual life project and then it gets documented and all of a sudden you're kind of famous. People know who you are. Is it is it weird? It's like, well, we're just us. Like, we're not. Has, did, did that shift at all? Did you feel any of the pressure of that? Do you try not to think about that a whole lot? How has that affected everything? Well, we're we're not we're not famous in France, um, so <laughs> it's hard that we have quite a normal life. Uh, you know, a very normal life. Because nobody it... knows we're the stupid English people. Actually, but <laughs> nobody else wanted to buy it. We've got there. The ones that spent the, what, they don't know it's going to have big heating bills they don't know it's falling apart the roof's got a hole in it but that's <laughs> So we, so we only ever really feel it um, when we go back to sort of visit the UK, and we're we're um, we're going back next week, and we haven't been back as a family for for quite some time. A couple um, of years now, yeah, it's been it's been a couple of years. We did a tour um, two years ago, a chatting tour, and it was sold out. We did, I think we did eighteen dates, wasn't it? And I think that was the first time that we was we was bowled over and really sort of like humbled. And I think we kind of giggled to ourselves. We, we were like, people come to pay to see us. Yeah, people you are know. actually paying money to come watch us in the okay. theatre. What's that about? But actually, because our life is normal. 
Arthur and Dorothy, you know, the, 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 we, had, we get people who pop by and stuff at the end of the road. It's, all sorts of things happen that remind you that we're in the public eye. But for us, you know, my mum would still clip me around the ear if I misbehave. Angela and I, <laughs> we, 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 we just, we try and have as normal a life as possible. And I, we, I think we're managing it. I don't think we could be, uh, I don't know how we could change, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? We're driven by the same things that we were driven by when, you know, all, you. always. And that's the big thing. Our values and our work ethics will never, ever change. Um, it's who we are. Um, yeah. And I think people, you know, they mainly love it. Some don't. What's very interesting, we bought the chateau before we made the decision to let the television companies follow us. We had actually, we, we had had some interest and we, we'd already found our plan to do the weddings, to do all the events that Fandy was doing, bought the chateau that followed us the day. They were happened to be with us by chance the day we found this chateau and because we looked at some more. And we only made our decision after we'd committed ourselves to what we were doing to allow the cameras to follow us oh, because wow. we thought it was going to be something that was going to be interesting and achievable. Aspirational, achievable, those two things aren't always the same. And somehow we felt that we were going to do something that was yeah. worth just following and because we, we the put, world is small. Yeah, and we put our foot down as well. We wanted it to be a happy show. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. It could have been a car crash show. And we were yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We, we, we I are. don't like the car crash shows. I know that that's like a popular thing with like a docuseries, like, and then the drama. But I, you know, especially to watch the show during quarantine and we like we burned through every episode in a short amount of time but it was but it was so joyful and watching things go wrong and you laugh about it and have fun and watch the kids be happy and then you're making food in the kitchen like it just it felt so good like it just it, it just had this like oh my god yes of course there are good things in the world and there are nice people in the world and there are and you can be happy and you can like it's it's really inspirational you know, from from that standpoint. Oh, Chris, that, thank you. That's really, yeah. really lovely to hear that from you. You know, we we, we love you and your values, and um, you know, we're excited for you and your new family as well. Um, we we have to say we when it sort of went to over to America, we we were sort of we were excited, and we've been really sort of humbled by the lovely emails that that we have been receiving. And it it was yeah. we know when a show has been on in America because the next day we get just a lot of lovely, and it's people it's. It's just there's nothing fancy really about the show it's it's family it's, it's family, family it's happiness it's... and I think that is what has sort of resonated you know it, it, we've been asked before what's been the success of the show we was like we have we haven't really a clue except for you know it's got to be people remembering about family and and old values and and simple things our multi-generational living the fact that Angela's parents are across with the children now in the coach house just across the way from here and they are happy the children are happy. We are happy. Yeah. One day soon, we'll be able to send the children across on a Sunday morning, go and play with grandma and granddad and have a lie in. That's <laughs> going to happen. You know, it's going to happen soon. But that's the multi-generational. Yeah, we're all our, for that. You've got to have your own space, though. Yeah. Mum and dad have to have their own they, space. They got their own, they got their own <laughs> well, yeah, it kind of made me think, too, about like, you know, oh, you'll go and do all these tour dates and people show up. And it's like, you know, you could 10,000 people could show up to tell you how amazing you are. But at the end of the day, you still got to go home and figure out how to hide the poop pipes. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like that balance. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Because you go back you know, change that, Duffy, yeah. and, and that's why our, our life, our life is actually, um, it's about living it. And Arthur and Dorothy keep you real. You know, we got a seven and eight year old. Dorothy was zero and Arthur was just two when we turned up in, in France. And all the way through, we, this is part of our story is their story growing up. Both of them are fluent French speakers. Angela and I are abysmal. They both fluent. Dorothy's little French accent. She could be a little French girl. She, and, and all of that side of life. And our children are living and smiling. And that's, we've done something right. Oh, that's fantastic. And I also have to thank you because I got a, we got a box in the mail the other day with the coolest stuff that uh, that was sent to us, like from Angel, from your collection. And there was one thing in there in particular that when I pulled it out, Lydia was like, what is that? And I go, Oh my God, it's like potholders, but there's a, th it's like they're connected. Lydia goes, Oh my God, so you don't burn your stomach when you're pulling a pot. Like the, the ingenuity of that, it's like this is, this is the perfect manifestation of a dick and angel world where it's like this gorgeous thing with this vintage vibe but it's engineered in a simple and clever way so it makes it entirely you know oh, useful 
Oh, I love you. Thank you for saying that. I, I feel quite sort of inspired to now go up in the attic, though, and to send you something that is really old to add to add to your collection. Oh, my God. I mean, we would be able to, like my wife. It's, she was so bummed that she couldn't be here to say hi to you. And she was so excited that I was doing this. And also um, my friend Christina Hendricks, who um, oh, yeah. just that we just saw her a couple of weeks ago. And I go, oh, uh, Dick and Angel on the podcast. She was like. Oh my God, can I say hi? And so I had invited her to pop on and say hi, but she was like, damn it. She had a meeting at the same time, but she, we bonded so much over our love of you and your show. And she's like, I'm going to that chateau at some point. Uh, And Lydia and I are like, we're coming too. She, she, she is, and you're very, very welcome. And I, I'm going to tell you a little secret. It's going to embarrass me a little bit because I'm, I just think Christina is just, she's so beautiful, um, and I mean Lydia is as well. Um, but when we did this, um, a little happy birthday for her. Yeah. Um, I, I did my nails. <laughs> like, she, Angela did her nails to say happy birthday. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that, I, I that, mean could that put that into context? That's a two-way thing there, isn't I it? Mean, I was so dusty and my nails were so chipped and I was like, such a stay. I think I don't have yeah, was, because we were just we were so busy and I was just like I can't do this you know this is my most beautiful woman ever so, oh my um, god she was so I, I knew she was just like so blown away to get that to get that message and oh. she's also she has an amazing design aesthetic and she's oh. been kind of going through a renovation um, challenges but uh, I know oh, she really I, wants to make it out there well we we don't go on um, social media that much actually, um, and um, but I do um, all the bits um, I, I get sent through. So I, I know um, we know stuff about you, and also um, but but we um, but um, our girl Bella, she's always sending sort of stuff through, and, and especially with Christina. Some of it is absolutely incredible. Her bathroom, oh my god, stunning absolutely stunning and oh, you you have I mean as long as we don't have a wedding um or you know any other type of event you are so welcome here just give us a little bit of warning and if you and Christina and her girls can come over all at the we'll same time you. I can um, cook and we're very very child friendly here you we know are so you don't friendly. need a car I've got pretty much nappies in every size and oh, like, wow <laughs> we, literally Angela covers no, everything I, just, I just this week I've actually been doing sorry I don't know how boring this is getting through but I've been making a memory because we're doing up our strawberry street i'm doing a memory blanket for dorothy and a memory bean bag so i'm cutting up all their old t-shirts interfacing them and then putting them all together and i've been going through boxes and boxes up in the attic of all the all the old clothes i can't I, go up there because there'll be tears running I'm down I'm my eyes out but i was actually it was just like i've just got boxes and boxes of these most incredible clothes i found some of the original baglioni stuff as well like all with it because it, there was just so much stuff little but, sailor suits are yeah, the norm we're not going to be rummaging. We've got so much on for the next couple of years. Um, and, you know, at some point when when we don't have as much on and we're talking it's yeah. two years plus, we will go and clear out our, et- our attic. So try and get here within the next couple of years. <laughs> so <you> can- <laughs> oh, we will. We will for sure. I mean, there's just just hearing you talk about that and seeing you both together. And also it is still a little surreal for me that you're talking back to me because Lydia and I talk to you on television all the time. Um, (laughs) You know, so it's, it's, I can't tell you what a joy and a pleasure. And then also just, you know, the idea is that like, it's, it's not just the preservation of the structure, but the preservation of the story and the preservation of the history. And how can we weave these elements and pass them down because that's ultimately what binds us all together, you know? Like, it's just this constant retelling of, of the human story. And I, I really feel like that's the, 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 the real, the, the, uh, the gold of, of your show is, is the basis of that. It's nectar, isn't it? It, it, it is. And, um, and I've, never, um, I've, I've never heard anyone actually say it back to us like you have in such an articulate way so um so thank you because i think we we, we, we believe that we talk we, we talk about our how you influence what your life is about how you do things and on our tour we talked a little bit about the meaning of life and it was a bit of a joke session but it was, it was true and talking about how you impact on more people how you interface with people what you say how they how people react to each other and what what good you do in the world you know and and we we hope that um everything we're trying to do is positive because Angela answers thousands upon thousands of emails of people who have got stories and people who are sort of part of this. And we are very privileged to be where we are through hard work. Yes, but we're very privileged and we don't forget it. We don't forget it. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing your story. And 
uh, and also transitively uh, all these other stories that make up your story, you know, in this amazing place. And, and this has just been the best. This has just been <laughs> such a pleasure. And, you know, it's so it delights me so much when it's like, oh, I'll bet they're really nice people. And you're talking to me like, God damn it, they're even nicer. They're even cooler than I hoped. So it's just as a, as, a, as a fan and an admirer of what you do, not just the show, but like what you do. Um, I really appreciate it. It's been really great. Thanks, it's been Chris. our pleasure. Yeah, it's Listen, been, yeah, love to wear your hat with pride, sir. <laughs> I, we'll see you yeah. soon. Good, have a great um, party as well. Well, thank you, and good luck with the fall. And I hope uh, hope everything continues to go well. And we cannot wait for the the new series. Which let's get the premiere date uh, uh, on here as well. We just got seven. It just went available on Peacock um, at the fir- the start of the month. And um, I know this is this is not a salesy thing, but we've answered so many emails. Peacock is free. Um, you have your tiered kind of um, uh, sort of streaming um, levels. Um, but I would have thought, because we've got a few year deal with uh, Peacock, that they will have this season. The it always goes out now. in the UK first, but they, it will it will follow sort of quite, quite soon. So yep. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you so room. much. Cheers. It has been lovely. Have a ball later. We we'll look forward to meeting you over here. With a I hope so. And, and happy holidays and so forth. I'll, I'll, I'll drop you a line. Take Meet care. You lovely to speak to you. Bye. 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 Oh, wait. Tip of the hat. <laughs> oh, sir, to be sure, <laughs> to be sure. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> ID Tenty scanning complete. Enjoy your burrito.